Twin Turbo Tuesday then. Uh, this is a little bit of a different update because I've actually got some work to do under the bonnet of my Range Rover. Uh, don't get too excited, I'm not ready for the turbos to go on yet. Um, yes, it is filthy in here because uh, I go off-roading. Um, still a fair bit of work to do on the dummy car setup over there. Um, but tonight, it's Friday evening, hence why I'm behind the camera myself. There's no one here to hold it for me and to throw remarks at me. Um, so tonight I'm fitting the timing cover, which if we take a look over here. Um, so timing cover that we saw in episode one uh, with the third port for the turbo oil feed. These two ports being used for oil pressure and oil temperature. And then the two ports for the uh, turbo returns mounted on the sump. And obviously it's now fairly obvious why they're both on the same side. Uh, I'm also going to be fitting a new top hose when I put it back together because my old one is bulging a little bit. Um, lots of bits turned up for me. Uh, it's a nice alley tubing and a few other bits. So there's a fair bit to show you under the bonnet of there as well. But this video will start with the work I'm doing this evening, which may well spill into tomorrow morning as well. Um, I probably will go home and get some sleep in between this evening and tomorrow morning, but we'll see. So tools are all out, ready to go. Let's crack on. Right, everything's going quite smoothly. The sump and timing cover are now off. Um, sump obviously has to come off first on these engines because of the three studs through the timing cover. And also the strainer that bolts to the timing cover as well has to be removed before that will come off. So uh, all made a lot easier with the alternator and bracket removed as well on these Thor engines. Um, so that's been removed. I've stripped the oil pump gears out of my timing cover and they have now been installed into this timing cover that I'm fitting, it's been modified. Um, so obviously I had brand new oil pump gears on standby just in case, but mine are still perfect. They've not been in the engine long really. Uh, it's a rebuilt engine I've got in there, so had new oil pumps then when that was done. So I'm absolutely uh, happy with those. They're in really good condition. So um, competition for anybody watching there. Um, this is the sump as removed from my car. Don't worry, this wasn't just rolling around in the sump. That's just the spacer for the strainer. I need to clean before putting it back on when it all goes back together. Um, you'll notice there's a dent in the baffle plate, uh, just there. Um, first person to comment on YouTube and then the first person to comment on Facebook as well, so we'll have two winners to this competition, as to why there is a dent in my baffle plate there. Um, we'll receive a free t-shirt uh, posted anywhere in the world, so um, Feel free to comment in the subject line before as to why uh, that baffle plate is dented from my engine. Right, um, I think I'll pop the timing cover back on, or the new one on, and uh, probably then call it a night and come back tomorrow morning and finish a job off. Right, Saturday morning then. I've got a little bit carried away this morning and forgotten about filming. Um, as you can see, it's pretty much all back together again now, so you can't really see, but the nice clean timing cover is down there. We have oil temperature sensor on the top, oil pressure sensor on the bottom, uh, sorry, in the middle. I did have to modify the alternator bracket slightly on the bottom bolt um, mount, so I avoided that because it's quite a large um, pressure uh, sensor. Obviously, if I was using a capillary gauge, that could be avoided. Um, and then on the very bottom, uh, it's got the oil takeoff. That's all good there. I've run the engine up. There's no leaks from there either. Um, obviously, I've run up without coolant in just for a little while, which is no issue. Um, and then underneath, uh, if the camera re kind of adjusts itself in light levels, there we go. There's the nice clean sump with the turbo returns in it. Um, so I am a little bit suspicious as to whether those turbo returns are going to be too close to the diff um, on maximum suspension travel, but I will check that out, and worst case scenario, I will relocate them on another sump and change the sump again. Um, that sump won't remain clean for very long because I am going to go off-roading tomorrow, 
as this is all gone according to plan, I've just got the oil pressure gauge to run through the uh, wire through the bulkhead and mount on the dashboard somehow. Um, so assuming I get all that done, I'll show you that. And then after this little bit, Steve will be in tomorrow, so we'll film an update on the um, dummy car over there to uh, show you where we're up to. Okay, so actually it's Monday morning now. Um, I forgot to film the end of this bit Saturday. Um, yes, I did go off-roading yesterday, as you can see. So, I now have gauges. Uh, excuse the uh, lack of metal work covering the back, but I ran out of time. So, um, it's those gauges there. I've also got a couple here to fire it up. So, monitoring these before before I do the turbo conversion, so that I know if I've got any sudden spikes of temperatures after the turbo conversion. So I've got coolant temperature, engine oil temperature, uh, gearbox oil temperature, that's taken off of one of the oil lines to the cooler. And then over here, um, obviously oil pressure, and uh, the important bit, boost, which obviously at the moment is just monitoring engine vacuum. Uh, Steve's in now, so we'll jump into the workshop and uh, do an update on the actual twin turbo section. As you can see then, um, first of all, Steve's behind the camera now. Hello. Thank you Steve for coming in. Um, so, the manifold, obviously things are just tacked in place. Um, got the primary runners down to the log. Uh, don't know if we discussed manifold types, but there's obviously you could go for have one cast. Um, there are cast manifolds available, but none of the outlets are in the positions I need them. Um, I could build a lobster manifold where you cut the pipes at different angles and build it like that. Uh, I could do a tubular manifold, but that's overkill for what I'm doing. Uh, log manifold is used in um, on various different engines um, and is proven. Uh, to actually run reasonable power on a four-cylinder engine. People run 300 horsepower through a log manifold, um, as long as it's built, obviously, with the right diameters of pipe and things. So uh, that should be fine. I'm not looking for this bank to run 300 horsepower. That would be uh, crazy on stock internals, and uh, obviously the turbos I'm running aren't suitable for that either. So that's where we're at there. I've now got another uh, section of tube to come up here with a bend on the end to feed this turbo. Um, the driver side manifold I've cut the flange off and orientated it slightly different ready for the pipe to go forward and then in this area here this is turned up so that is I believe where I'm going to position the charge cooler um, there's plenty of space above this for coolant pipe because uh, the bonnet's got a really good head of about four inches on there, so we're fine for that. Uh, I've got 180 degree alley pipe here, which I'm gonna trim down and sit about here, reorientate this to point in that direction and trim. Um, and then I've got to fit an airflow meter um, and obviously pipe work between there and there. So that's where this thing comes in, hopefully. Uh, another bit of alley pipe ordered just to uh, Sometimes you've got to just order pipe and see if it's going to do what you need it to, see if it will work. Obviously the length of this is ridiculous, but we can trim and weld that down, that's not an issue. Um, and then that leads me on to something else that's turned up, which is a couple of little uh, pipes. Because the original idle valve went into the plenum hose here. Um, that I could weld a boss onto the alley, I guess. However, obviously the breather setup is totally going to change um, because you can't run pressurized system on a conventional breather setup. So that's gonna change. And the port around the back of this throttle body that, that goes on uh, will be left redundant. Now it's not as large as the pipe work that used to go into the induction um, plenum pipe. However, um, I'm gonna carry out a test on my car using these two pipes trimmed down to run from the idle valve down to the um, breather port there. If the breather port needs opening up, that's not a problem. We can uh, machine that out and put a, a larger pipe in it. Um, however, on earlier engines, it was a very small pipe and they controlled the idle just fine. So we'll, we'll see how that pans out. 
think that pretty much uh, concludes the update this Tuesday, although it's Monday. Don't look at me, I didn't film half of it. <laughs> no, and you haven't seen how poor it is, so uh, good luck editing it. Um, right, I'll uh, crack on and uh, see what the next video brings. Get to work. Yeah.